Boo! Welcome back to Keep On Creating. I'm Mike, this is my t-shirt printers. Let's create something. Creators of the universe. You'll know what that's all about if you watched the last episode, or this will just be some sort of a awkward silence. So if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button over here and ding the bell so you know when a fresh episode comes into the channel. A few things to get out of the way today. First, a few good old mentions. I went into work this week and I found a few parcels there waiting for me. And I love getting parcels. And without much hesitation, obviously, I busted open the packages to find some really cool stuff from John at Workwear Department. Some awesome patches, stickers, pens, and this awesome pencil, which is gonna come handy in an upcoming episode which I've got planned. Like this pencil. And I got this awesome t-shirt from Super T Prince, a nice cool big lightning bolt. Now obviously you've been watching the channel because you know I like lightning bolts, which kind of makes me think I was actually looking at a lightning bolt for here on the wall. It's one of those, should I, shouldn't I, I'm not too sure. I like the idea of a lightning bolt over there, but mm, let me know in the comments below. Yes, lightning bolt, no lightning bolt. Anyway, get back on track here. Thanks for all the cool stuff. Now in the last episode, we went and created a patch style design, which I actually went and embroidered onto a cap. Two seconds. And it came out pretty cool. I think that was really strong. I actually posted this uh, picture onto our Instagram and Facebook pages. So if you haven't seen it already, go ahead and have a look. And it's also on the Keep On Creating Facebook page. If you haven't been over there, go ahead and join. Join the community and start showing off what you guys have been creating. Which brings me to today's episode where we are gonna create a patch style design, Infinity Designer, vector goodness again. Let's go. So let's dive in here and get a new document open. So up to Affinity Designer, across to File and drop down to New to get this new document open. I'm just gonna work on, let's just change that to 400 by 400 and the DPI doesn't matter because it's a vector file. All the rest of the stuff I'm not really worried about and I'm just gonna click Create. And up pops our window. Now I have got my rulers set up here so my rulers are running on the top and the side. If yours aren't showing, just hit up to View and just make sure Show Rulers is switched on. Let's start off by drawing a rectangle in the middle of our artboard. So I'm gonna head over to our tools on the side over here on the left hand side and select this rectangle tool or push M as your quick key. So let's just draw a rectangle somewhere around, around about here-ish. Yeah, let's just draw it about there. I'm gonna move it more to the center of the page. So I'm just gonna push a V or get my move tool, which is this pointer tool up here. I'm just gonna move it more or less into the center of my page. So get it there. Cool. And I want to drag some guys to the center of this. So making sure all my snapping options are turned on the top over here. So you can see these are my snapping options. I'm just going to switch them all on and drag some guides into the center parts of my rectangle. So I'm going to click over here, drag a guide and you can see it'll snap and do the same with the horizontal and it'll snap. Now you can see my guides are nicely showing and I know exactly where the center of my rectangle is. So just zooming in here a little bit, holding spacebar and command, just dragging off to the right and just getting in here a bit. I'm gonna to start to draw some oval shapes. So if we're to draw an oval shape, let's just get our circular tool or ellipse tool up. So I'm gonna click on that. Let's head over to the center so now I know exactly where my center is. Click and drag and then hold command and you can see it drags from the center. We want a shape more or less somewhere around here. I'm just gonna release that and I just wanna change this around a little bit. So I'm gonna head over here to my swatches and you can see currently I've got a white or a gray fill in here. It looks like white, but it's actually gray. And I've got a black stroke on. I don't want this fill in. So I'm gonna click on this little swatch over here and take away the fill just so I can see where the rectangle is. I'm gonna head up here to stroke and just make my stroke a little bit thicker so we can actually see it. So I'm gonna make it, let's make it around about there for now so we can just see what we're actually doing. What I'm gonna be doing is focusing on this top section of the design. So I'm not really worried about this bottom section and you'll see in a bit it starts overlapping, but I'm just gonna be looking at this top section over here. So what I am gonna go ahead with is just taking this bottom section over here with my move tool selected and I'm gonna click and just drag that down to, let's just say about there, I'll say, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's that's kind of hopefully what I'm looking for. Now what I'm gonna do with my move tool still selected, which is this arrow tool or this top tool up here, that's the move tool. I'm gonna to click on this, then I'm gonna hold down Alt and Shift just to drag another copy of it and just drag down. You can see it makes a duplicate copy of our design that we've just done there. 
Basically, what I'm trying to do is trying to create this curve to almost the same curve as that one up there. So what I need to do is just bring this in a little bit. And you can see if I bring it in from this side, it's not dragging in from my left hand side. So if I hold down command and you can see it drags in from both sides. So that's kind of what I'm looking for there. So you can see if I just focus within this rectangle bit, I've kind of got the same width going through all of that until it gets to like this section over here where it tapers in. And then you can see what I'm talking about. It's all overlapping like crazy at the bottom over here, which is not what we're looking for. But this is the part I was looking for at the top over here. We could probably even just take this top arc a little bit and I'm just going to bring that in very slightly from the top just like that, just so it's within our bounding box there and you'll see why in a second. So what we need to do is select this section, the inner side, okay? Just make sure it's on the top layer so it's above this other circle. So how to do that, we're just gonna open up our layers and you can see this ellipse, which I've got selected, this inner one is above our secondary one or our main one on the outside over here. So I'm gonna select them both. I'm just gonna hold shift and select both layers head on up here to our pathfinder and click on subtract. Now all we're left with is that section there. Now what I wanna do is select this object over here, so our curve and our rectangle behind it. I'm gonna select both of those and I'm going to hit this intersect button over here and all we're left with is that curve now. So you can see the reason why I didn't have, let me just undo a bit here, I didn't have this above here, is if I had to intersect that, you will see it will chop off the top of our curve there and that's not what we want. So we just bring it in ever so slightly and then hitting that intersect button and we keep our full curve. The next stage is let's select this with our move tool, this top arrow tool over here. I'm just gonna click this while holding Alt and Shift and just drag down to make another copy of it. So we've got another copy going there. Uh, I wanna flip this around. So the easiest way to flip this around, just head on straight up here, just under where it says Affinity Designer and our file name. I'm gonna click on this flip vertical and you can see it just flips it right over. Just so I can see what we're doing and to get closer to the design I wanna do, I'm gonna hold Shift and select both of our objects and take off this fill. So I'm gonna click on this no fill and just go up here to stroke and just widen up this width of our stroke over here. So I'm gonna make it nice and thick, because obviously if we're looking for this to be an embroidery, we want these lines to be pretty thick. So I'm gonna take this line over here and I want it to basically snap to that guide over there. So we've got this cool shape just joining in these sections over here. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna bring this down, I select everything there. As you can see, I've just dragged my marquee and I'll make sure it snaps right to the center. So I've still got my center line going through here, my center line going through there. It just keeps everything nice and uniform and easy to work with. So if now I basically wanted to make this taller, I can just go over here and just hold down command and just drag. I'm just gonna make that a little bit taller. So make it like about there-ish, because obviously we wanna do some stuff on the middle over here. Now I would like some text running up here and down here, possibly the same text, but firstly what I wanna do is just get this to a size that I know we're gonna be embroidering to. So worst case scenario, I'm just gonna select this all over here and let's size this to, let's say 60 high. So it's gonna really go small. I'm gonna to have to recenter everything again, just drag it in there, just so that I know what sort of size we're gonna be dealing with when we're taking this to embroidery. Obviously, because we don't want the text too small, uh, otherwise it'll look like a mess. So I'm just gonna select this line over here. I'm gonna hold down Alt and Shift again, just click another copy, drag it up here. And now I'm gonna break this curve down because basically I want this curve at the bottom over here. So I'm gonna get up my node tool, which is this tool over here, get that selected. I'm gonna hold down Shift, select this node over here and this node over here. So I've got both of those nodes selected just on those corners. Head on up here to where it says action across to this little button over here, it says break curve and I'm gonna click on that. So what that's basically done is if we now select this top section, you can see it no longer selects this bottom curve, it's just selecting that top curve. I'm just gonna hit backspace or delete and all we're left with is this curve. Let's just drag this curve back in here. Okay, so I'm around, I'm gonna drag it back to, just, just drag it back to there and I'm just gonna squish it down a little bit so it follows that path quite nicely. And that's kind of what we're looking for there. Maybe a little bit more up to follow it. Yeah, that's it, cool. And now let's get our text tool up, which is T or this artistic text tool over here. And let's just click on this line. You can see that line disappears. Let's type in our text. So we're gonna type in keep on creating. Now I want this to be quite a solid style of font for this. So I'm gonna use, let's use this font over here. 
yeah, that'll be cool. And it's gonna be nice and solid because it's gonna be on a smaller area and we want it to be as clear as possible when we actually go and embroider this on a cap. So with your text selected there, you can either just head on up here where it says your font size and just scroll up if you want, or use your keyboard command of, I think it's command shift and the arrow bracket on the outside. You can keep on tapping that and you can see it makes it bigger. Obviously we need this to be centered. So I'm gonna triple click everything there heading up here to the center line, click on that, and you can see it basically is meant to center it where the text is, but to make it center, we have to drag these little nodes out. So if I just drag that one right to there and drag this little red one over here right to there, we know that that's now centered in the middle of that line that we've created. I'm thinking that we can actually bring this down a little bit to about here and then just make this text further, just increase that size a little bit further to about well, let's make it let's make it about there because what we can do is spread out this text a little bit. When I mean spread out this text, I mean spread out these little gaps in between the letters over here. So we're going to head on up back up here to where our text options are. Click on this little character palette, head over to this option over here, this tracking option, and we're just going to gently increase that to where we want. So I'm looking about there is just to fill up that area quite nicely. So if we just deselect that, close this window, and you can see that's filling up that space quite nicely now. Right now, I'm happy with that text as it is. So before I go any further, I'm going to convert this text to outline. So how do we do that? We can just go Command Enter or head on up here to layer and drop down to convert to curves. And you can see it now longer is no longer text and it's a graphic file. So we just head over here to layers to confirm that and show you guys it says a group. So it's no longer a text element. Now I'd like this text here to run on the bottom section over here. So a quick way to do that, select it, hold alt and shift, click and drag to make that duplicate copy. It gives us this little rotate icon over here on this node. Click that, hold shift, and you can see it snaps nicely to that 180 degrees. It's flipped upside down, and just drag it into place, around about there, and that looks pretty cool. Let's start looking at the center of this. So let's get up our pen tool, which is P, or head on over here to your tool palette and select this tool over here. Now we know exactly where our center is over there. It's cool how this highlights these center points. You can see how it turns all yellow over there and it snaps to these lines to show that we have got them selected in the right place. So with my pen tool selected, I'm just gonna click over here and I'm just gonna click to somewhere around about over here and make a line. I'm going to duplicate that line, so I'm going to click on it, hold Alt and Shift, just drag it across to the other side, just pop it over there, and we've got that center bit. So let's just make another circle in the center over here. Get your Ellipse tool, which is this tool over here. I'm going to click on that. Head right to the center of my object, so you can see how these lines are really helping us out. Click, drag, hold Command to drag from the center. Also hold Shift to engage that perfect symmetric circle. And let's just drop it over there, that's cool. Now I'm going to just tuck these two lines slightly back a bit. So to do that, I need to adjust this node. Just go over there and drag it back. Same with this side, go over there with my Move tool, drag it back so it just touches those other sides there. Let's just hide our guides for the second here. So we can either go View and where is it? Show guides, click that off, or there's your quick key over there, and you just take off those guides, so we take that away. And we've got to put something in the middle over here. Hmm, lightning bolt? Yep, lightning bolt. So we just get our pen tool up, which is P. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you should know exactly how to draw a lightning bolt. So a couple of points, let's just draw a lightning bolt like, in actual fact, let's just draw a different style of lightning bolt. We're gonna go from here, we're gonna go here, hold shift, just as all done with our pen tool, making it really easy. And I'm just gonna pop that there. Now obviously it looks a bit squashed at the moment. So we've got our node tool up and we can select all these nodes individually. So you can see we select all those and we can click and adjust them as much as we want to make that perfect lightning bolt over there. Now what I wanna do with this, I don't want it to be an outline. I want that to be a fill. So head over here to your swatches, just flip these around and we've got a nice a solid fill there. Let's just zoom in a little bit and just make this line. I'm just gonna bring those two nodes up a little bit and these two nodes here, just bring them, whoop, just stick them both and just drag them down a bit, just make it a little bit thicker just constantly thinking of how this is gonna be embroidered with the thinner lines. What I need to do before we go ahead is just check the width of these lines to make sure they're gonna embroider out. Okay, so I'm just gonna zoom right in here. I'm gonna get a rectangle, so I'm gonna bring that up and I'm gonna draw a line 
probably somewhere around about one mil. So if I just go up here to transform and let's just go a height of one mil. And you can see that that is one mil there. Okay, so that's probably our minimum embroidery size that I like to embroider to get a nice solid structured line. And we are above that, so that that's looking really good. Also, you can check that against our text. So one more high is that way. So let's just make it one more wide as well. And so just take off that one more by one more. So we've got a nice square here. So you can kind of see if I look at these lines that they fit within that one mole by one mole and we're going to get a good embroidery from that so just delete that so i'm happy with how that is so i'm going to get my move tool selected which i've got at the moment this top tool over here just click and drag a marquee over everything so select everything heading up here to layer drop all the way down to expand stroke and everything expands i just noticed i think i saw a white layer there i'm going to delete that because i don't want that so just select it and backspace it and there is our design. So that's looking pretty cool. If we wanted to go and add some color to this, let's just go into our layers palette and just start grouping things so it's easy to change color. I'm gonna select all my lines, so all these lines over here, and that line over there, those are all my lines. I'm gonna make them one object. So with all those objects selected, all those curves selected, heading up here to this add function, add them all together. Select our two text objects, which is this bottom and this top over here. So these two groups over here. So I'm going to select that, select that. I'm going to have to right click this, drop all the way down to ungroup. So it ungroups them, then head on up here to this add function and make them one curve. So now you can see it's just one curve there. I'm actually going to take our text object and put it just above these curves over here so that we can select it easier because currently we wouldn't be able to select it very easy. Now the lighting bolt we'll just leave on its own layer in case we want to change that. Let's put this on a black background. So I'm just going to make a new layer, drag that layer all the way down to the bottom and let's just zoom out a bit. Okay, and get my rectangle tool, just hit M or select this tool over here. Click and drag a massive marquee around there or a big rectangle. And let's start changing the color of these. So let's make this one, head down to your swatches here. We've got no color showing. So where it says grays, I'm gonna click on that, bring up our colors. These are all our cool colors that we're gonna be using. And let's just make that blue. Select our lightning bolt. Let's make our lightning bolt white. Making sure that your fill is selected here. Select our text layer and make that white. And that is our patch. Pretty happy with how that design came out. It looks nice and clean. It's got that cool badge style effect to it, that simplicity to it. And because we kept in mind our line widths, it's gonna look good as an embroidery, which I'm actually gonna try and embroider onto a cap and post it on one of our social media accounts. So make sure to follow us on our social media accounts, which I'll list over here below. And you can see what it comes out like. So with all that, don't forget to let me know about the lightning bolt. Yes or no, it's my hum ha situation. I'd like to know what you guys think. With all of that, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm out here.